144. The enthalpy of vaporization of water is larger than the enthalpy of fusion. Explain why. Okay, so in order to answer this question, I did pull up the actual values for fusion, enthalpy of fusion, and enthalpy of vaporization, and then I drew this little drawing here, which we will get into. But just know that fusion, F-U-S or fusion, fusion is a fancy way for saying melting. So fusion and melting is just talking about a solid substance physically converting into a liquid substance. It's a physical change. So since we're talking about water, right, or H2O, the solid form is ice, and the ice is converting into liquid water. And I have the picture here where these uh, blue balls... <laughs> Yikes. Um, these little blue balls are uh, the solid form. Keep in mind that solids, remember, are so, 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 so close together. They have high intermolecular forces. And that's why they are able to be in contact so closely with each other. Remember, intermolecular forces are uh, the forces, the attractive forces between two uh, adjacent molecules and keeping them together. So the more together that, that a sample is in terms of their molecules, the higher the intermolecular forces. Now, as we go to vaporization, right, which is basically just evaporating, you're taking your liquid water and turning it into a gas, which is steam. So this is what happens when you boil water. And look at the difference in value. To go from ice to water, to just melt ice, it requires 6.01 kilojoules of energy per one mole of ice, or H2O solid. But it takes 44.01 kilojoules per one mole of water to turn it into steam. I mean, from 6 to 44 is roughly about, you know, an 8 times difference, because 8 times 6 is 42. So it's roughly 8 times more energy. That's a lot of energy. But let's just figure it out as to why. Well, just like we said that the closer the molecules are together, interacting, you have high molecular, intermolecular forces. But as you go from a solid to a liquid, and definitely from a liquid to a gas, the molecules are acting independently. There is no communication between the individual water molecules. So to get to a gas, you have so low, I mean low, 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 barely none, if you want to think of it as, you know, none, no, no intermolecular forces anymore. Because they're all acting independently. So the liquid is just kind of like the middle, the middle substance, right? Now these black lines that I draw here uh, represent the amount of movement I didn't draw any of those lines for the solid because solids don't move, right? Because their intermolecular forces are so high that they stick together. But water, aka H2O liquid, slides a little bit. The molecules are sliding around each other, so they're able to move. But the gases, since they are not in contact with any other uh, H2O gas molecule, they all act independently, there's literally no intermolecular forces. So, to go from a solid to a liquid only requires 6.01 kilojoules, as opposed to the eightfold, almost, you know, a little bit more than eightfold difference of 44.01 kilojoules per one mole. And we can kind of see the difference as to why in the pictures. Uh, my voice is going. <laughs> That's fun. Ah. <clears throat> Nothing that, oh, maybe... Maybe a little water can fix, or I guess can't in this in this situation, but we'll keep going. Hopefully it gets better. I think it's getting better. But anyway, so from a solid to a liquid, the difference between the molecules are not that great. Notice how in a solid and a liquid, the, the uh, molecules are not all over the container. They're not allowed to be on the top of the container. They have to be, because of gravity reasons, you know, pulled down to the container. But as far as a gas, since these have so high kinetic energy, they're bopping all over the container. They're allowed to be on the top, the sides, the bottom. Nothing is out of question for gases. So 
we'll say for fusion, which is the solid to a liquid, the energy that is required is low, low amount of energy, because basically you only need to overcome a small amount of intermolecular forces. They're still very closely together, but they're just able to slide over each other. So low amount of energy because um, only a little bit of intermolecular forces can, you know, are overcome. Inter intermolecular forces are overcome or, you know, taken over. So the molecules can slide over each other. But they're not, you know, all over the container. But in terms of vaporization now, vaporization, where we're specifically talking about a liquid going to a gas, this is a much greater change. Much greater changes require a lot more energy because now your gas molecules are acting independently. You need to overcome, so we said molecules need to overcome all molecular, intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces, they all act independently, so that's why you need a high amount of energy, four times the amount to get those molecules to be bopping up on the top of the container, the side of the container, all over the place. And that's the reason why. I hope this helps. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to have a large glass of water now <laughs> and uh, give my voice a little bit of rest. And I hope you guys are well out there and staying safe and staying healthy. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is the holiday season. Uh, New Year is coming. So the cold, especially in, uh, you know, the East Coast, uh, you know, cold weather, a lot of colds can come. So I just wish you health and happiness and excitement and more learning for the new year. All right. So stay safe, safe, healthy, and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.